so this is a series of lecture and this is this lecture is about solving the problem to find Norton's equivalent circuit so the circuit is here so this is uh, the circuit on which is to be Norton's equivalent circuit is find, find out so this is the uh, steps which I will use to solve this problem. So there are multiple ways to solve the same problem, but this is a method which I will be using. And first, I will, what I will do is I will find the Thiebaud's equivalent circuit for this by shorting all the voltage sources. And then what I will do is that I will find the VTH for the circuit or the Thiebaud's equivalent and Thiebaud's voltage and then what I will do is I will find the Thiebaud's equivalent circuit and convert it to Norton circuit so to find out the Thiebaud's circuit simply shorting what I will get I will get 10 here I will get 16 here there is one more branch here which I missed this was this is 8 and the 8 is here and there is this short the 6 here and the 16 here so both of these are in parallel so if I say R1 is this, R2 is this, R3 is this, R4 so R1 is parallel to R2 to find out that it's 10 into 8 divided by 18 so that is 80 divided by 18 so calculating just this is equal to 4.4 ohms and then I have 4.4 is in series with the 16 and this is again in series with the 6 so the total resistance is 4.4 plus 16 plus 6 is equal to 26 26.4 ohms this is parallel to the 6 ohm resistance so this is 20.4 parallel 6 so equal to 20.4 into 6 divided by 26.4 which is equal to 4.63 so this is the resistance of the RTH which we have found equal to 4.63 RTH is equal to 4.3 ohms so now to find out the voltage at this junction that is if you are having this as V1 and this as V2 then you would have to find the voltage V2 which is equal to the VTH voltage so to find that you would have to take the loop analysis by assigning the current I1 to this loop and the I2 to this loop so by going in the first loop what you will get is minus 160 plus 10 I1 plus 8 I1 minus I2 equal to 0 and going to the second loop what you will get is this both will be now in series so you are getting 24 I2 plus 20 plus 8 I2 minus I1 equal to 0 so so on solving this is a first equation which you are getting and this is a second equation on solving the second equation you can find the value of I1 in this form and you by solving the first equation and substituting this I1 here 
you can get the value of I2 which you can get close to as 1.8 amperes so this is the value of I2 which you are getting and then some substituting you will get the value of in this you will get the value of I1 is equal to 9.68 ampere and so so what we got is RTH we got the value of I2 is equal to 1.8 and the value of I1 is equal to 9.6 ampere 68 ampere So now the next step is to find out what is the current through this branch. So that current, if the current coming from here is I1, the current going through here is I2. Then you can find out the voltage of this node V1 as the current I1 is equal to 160 minus V1 divided by 10. So the current was 9.6 equal to 160 minus V1 divided by 10. So you get V1 as can be found out. So it would be 96 is equal to 160 minus V1. So 160 minus 96 equal to 64 so you'll get v1 as equal to 64 and based on that you can get this current which is 64 divided by 8 so which is equal to 8 so you are getting your i3 as 8 if you are this is this is i1 this is i3 this branch current as 8 uh, again other way to find that would be to subtract it as I this branch current is I1 minus I2 so it is 9.6 minus 1.8 so 9.6 minus 1.8 is close to 7.8 which is approximately equal to 8 which you have got and this branch current will be this so the I1 is what is entering so my I1 equal to what is leaving so it's I3 plus I2 uh, which if I consider this branch current I2 this so don't confuse this with the I2 which we found so that's 9.6 minus 8 or uh, which is close to which is equal to 1.8 so, so we are getting the branch current what I got was so this branch current what I got was 1.8 which is equal to I2 anyway so now my task is to find so I have validated that whatever I have done is correct in other ways so my task is to find this voltage so just I pause here. So for this no so for this current which is I2 I can write I2 is equal to V2 plus 20 divided by or 
read to in any case what consider that as a plus sign so this is v2 minus 20 divided by 6 so my i2 was 1.8 into 6 is equal to v2 minus 20 so 1.8 into 6 is equal to 10.8 so 10.8 plus 20 is equal to v2 which is equal to 30.8 volts so that's my volt across this so that is equal to vth and it's positive and so I can draw my equivalent circuit as a voltage of 30.8 which is a VTH and my RTH is 4.63 ohms and to convert this into what is known as Norton circuit what I need to do is to convert this to Norton circuit is I need to divide I to find out the I short circuit or I Norton I need to divide the VTH divided by RTH which is equal to 30.8 divided by 4.63 so 30.8 divided by 4.63 is equal to 6.6 .6. so my current is 6.6 .6 and the resistance I will put in parallel will be the RTH which will be 4.63 so this is my Norton's equivalent circuit and this was what was required to find so there was first I found out the RTH that was what I did then next, next I use the loop analysis to find out the branch currents so I found out I1 then I found out I2 and finally what I found out was I found out the VTH and then I converted it to I new Norton then I don't draw the new Norton's equivalent circuit so this is how you can solve a problem related to Norton's equivalent circuit